We're so glad that you came with us tonight, that you're with us to follow the Word of God and to hear another portion of God's will. It is our prayer that we'll declare unto you only the Word of God and what He says for us in order that we might be blessed through Him. It, is, it has always been and it is our determination here at the Belfont Church Christ to preach only the gospel of Jesus, only the truth of God's will, in order that every man, every man might see the blessings that God has for us and that one might desire to be a part of what God gives. I want to first thank you for viewing our program and secondly to thank those that are involved in bringing this to you by means of the social media. It is unfortunate that we are not able to be together as a crowd or as a group on these Sunday evenings, but we're glad that you're able to view from your own homes or from some place other than the building our program. And we continue to bring the gospel of Jesus and endeavor to bring only the truth of God's will before each and every person. I'm going to begin with something that I've used about two or three times, I know, uh, since I first went to the Ark, the Arch in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, several years ago, and I'm talking about way back when, I w had the pleasure of going to the Ark and go up into the Arch and, and, and be at the top to view all the things around about. Uh, one of the things that I enjoyed by looking out over the city of St. Louis was seeing the old Capitol building that was there uh, near the Mississippi River. And it's still there, and it's, it's a beautiful sight. But in order to go to the top of the arch and to view the city and all the surroundings, even, even at that time I could see Bush Stadium, if you please, but one of the things you had to do when you went into the lobby, and I've mentioned this before, is it has a sign up there, and if you want to go up to the top of the arch, you have to go down. It's important to go down the steps so that we might be able to get into the little pods and go up to the top. You have to go down. And as I stood there, even the first time that I went, I stood there and I looked at what that sign said, and I said, oh, how true this is, even in the light of God's will. If you have your Bible, and I pray that you do, I want you to turn with me to the book of 1 Peter in the 5th chapter. I, I want to read a passage of Scripture before we get our lesson that I believe will set the stage for man's acceptance by God. Are you telling, listening to me? Or are you listening to what we're saying? I believe this passage, if we would bind ourselves to it, never let it go, would help us to be what God would have us to be. Fortunately, we only think of the nose oftentimes. When we are to think about, as one brother said, the goes that God says in there. So in the book of 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, I'm going to begin with verse 6. Verse 6. Well, matter of fact, let's back up to verse 5. In verse 5 it says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. Now, he's been giving some examples of how a person ought to submit themselves unto uh, various authorities. It might be a parental authority. It might be a governmental authority. It might be any other type of authority. And then he says down here, The younger submit themselves to the elder. And, he says, that we ought to submit ourselves one to another. Are you listening? You see, this puts a, a level on our playing field, does it not? Each person, individually, not one exalted above another. Now, this is what God tells. And he's writing to the Christians. And listen to this part, and I think this is important. For God resisteth the proud and gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Again, in Matthew 5, if you remember, in what is commonly called the Beatitudes, the introduction, if you will, to the Sermon on the Mount by Jesus. 
I want you to notice that he says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. The ones that do not exalt themselves above someone else. One that is able to humble themselves before one another. Submit to one another. Okay? Now, verse 6. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Submit yourself to God. This is what God wants us to do. This is what he tells us in his word in order that we might be acceptable to him, in order that we might be a better person. Submit ourselves to God. Humble ourselves. And then he says, in due time, he will exalt you. You see how this passage relates to what I read in the sign in the, at St. Louis at the arch? You see what he said? In order to go up, you have to go down. In order to be exalted by God, you have to humble yourself before him, before his mighty hand. This is what God wants out of you and out of me and out of anyone. And someone says, this is hard to do. And it, it is oftentimes hard for a person to the humble themselves, before, especially before other people. But this is what we must do. Now listen to this passage. It's in the same context. Verse 7, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Cast your cares upon God. Turn yourself over to Him. Submit yourself to Him because He cares for us. He cares for us. Uh, we understand how in times, troublesome times in families, how that uh, we are to support one another. Uh, I'm talking about families that are physical. I'm talking about families that are spiritual. I'm talking about families. And how that we are to, as a family, support one another. That, that's God's plan. That's God's desire that we do that. And if we don't take care of our own, we're worse than an infidel, the Lord says, okay? But nevertheless, this is what God wants. He wants us, and, and he says, you know, I'm, I'm your father. So you have troubles, you have difficulties? Cast your cares on me. Cast your care upon me. I care for you. Sometimes, sometimes we neglect or we forget. Uh, oftentimes we run to God and say, why did you let this happen to me? Or why did you do this? And of course, he did not do it. Sometimes he allows things to happen, even as he did with Job. But as Job did, so must we realize that God's always there for us. And not allow Satan to have the upper hand. Now, we're warned in verse 8, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Like a hungry lion. Oh, Satan's walking there. He's walking about seeking out those whom he may devour. Did you know one of the most wonderful compliments ever written about God? Are you listening? Compliments about God that was ever written was written about Job in the book of Job. Remember when the Bible, when it begins, the book of Job begins, and it's not long thereafter that it says that uh, uh, when the men of God came together, that the Satan came with them. And Satan approaches God. I mean, he's been, he's been going to and fro, up and down the world, seeking whom he may, I'm going to use the, Peter's term here, seeking whom he de devour. And God says, and now this is a compliment given by God. He says, have you tried my servant Job? Have you tried my servant Job? I know. I know that some people don't look at this, but here, here, is, here is Job, a man of God that worships God. Trust God with all his heart. And God is saying to the Satan, Have you tried my servant Job? <laughs> and of course, Satan argues with God and says, Now listen, 
You put a hedge around him. You blessed him because Job was a rich man. Job had a lot. But you put a hedge around him. If you take away what he has, what you have blessed him with, he'll curse you. He'll turn against you. And God says, listen to the compliment he gives to Job. Listen to this. He says, go ahead. Now, we know the story about Job, how that, first of all, he ruined his crops and his possessions there, and then it was his family, and then it was Job's health. And through all this, Job exalts God. Oh, he asked God, why did this happen? And when God says, hey, you're questioning me? Did you create the mountains? Did you cause the... And Job realized it, and, and through all this, even though he had a question in his mind, he did not forsake God. He held true to God. Hey, we have the same God. We have the same care that he had. And listen to this, verse 9. Here's how Job overcame. Listen to how we're to overcome. He says that Satan is roaming about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And then he says, whom resists steadfast in the faith. Resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren and are in the world. He says, listen, you're not the only one. Cast your cares upon God. He cares for you. And so this is what we mean when we think about the arch. In order to be exalted or to go up, you have to first go down. We have to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God, and He will take care of us. It's a promise from God. Now, I must admit that I need a little help in building up that strength and having that faith that I ought to. Yes, I need help. I need, I need someone to help me. And up here, as we began, we talked about submitting ourselves one to another. I have to admit the fact that, listen, I can't stand alone. I can't stand alone. And, and I'm not just going back to Jeremiah 10, 23, where the Lord said, O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not within himself. It is not in man that walketh direct his own steps. I know that. But I need, I need assistance. I need help. I need my brethren. Are you listening? I need my brethren to hold me up, to help support me. And I need to be there for them to help support them during their trying times. And so I truly must submit myself unto my brethren as they submit themselves as well to me. We're unity. We're, we're a, a group that supports one another. You know, we know, uh, we read a lot about, and they're good things. Now, don't get me wrong. They're good things, very good things, about support groups for this, this, and this, and this. A and we have a support group in the church. In God's family, we have a support group. We call them brethren, and we're to support one another, and we're to submit ourselves one to another. Now, in order for me to get that support, in order for me to, shall I say, profit from that which is available for me through God, there's some things I must do. Now, number one, let me say this. I'm only speaking as an oracle of God, First Peter 4, verse 11. So I'm going to only say those things that are written in Scripture about these things. So number one, I want you to note this. The church, the family of God, the church, the ecclesia, the body of Jesus. Christ is the head of the church. It's not some man name that we look to. It is Christ Jesus, the Son of Almighty God. And so we come together to worship God. Now listen to me. When we come together upon the Lord's Day, when we come together today, we come for the purpose of worshiping God. That's the one purpose that we assemble together, and that is to worship God. Now, we worship God. We know how we worship God. John 4, verse 23 and 24 tells us that we are to worship God in spirit and in truth. A spirit mean with the right attitude toward God. We understand that. And the truth mean according to what's written in the Scripture, John 17, 17. So we're to, we to do it in the right manner, in the right way. And, and according to Scripture, when we read our Bibles and we see how we're to worship God... We see that we're worshiping 
uh, through singing, through singing. Uh, it's interesting that uh, someone has pointed out several times, and, and rightfully so, that singing is important. Ephesians 5, verse 19, Colossians 3, verse 15 and 16. We know that we're to sing melody in our hearts unto the Lord. We're to sing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. We're to teach and admonish one another in song. We're to sing. And when we do so, we're admonishing one another and we're worshiping God. But we're called home by God to do so. And of course, if you go back in your Bibles in Amos uh, 3 and chapter 3 through chapter 5, you'll find that uh, God tells us that He wants us to do it as He has given. It wasn't until after the 4th century that anyone ever used mechanical instruments of music. The heart strings are to be plucked. Worship God that way. And we're to worship God by praying. And they continued steadfastly in Apostles' doctrine and prayer and fellowship and breaking of bread. Let, uh, we are to pray to God. One of the most beautiful, if not the greatest privilege we have as a Christian is that of prayer. Oh, how important it is to pray for one another. Acts 4, verse uh, 42. Acts 2, verse 42. I'll get it right in a minute. We're to pray. And, and we're to pray and sing alike. I will pray with the Spirit. I will Pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the understanding. God tells us how. Look at 1 Corinthians 3. And so God wants us to do it. And we have the, uh, we say the preaching, okay? We have the teaching of God's will. We have the proclamation of God's will. We do it to worship God. Uh, this is what you've given to me, Lord. They continue in apostles' doctrine and in fellowship, in breaking of bread and in prayers. God told us that in Acts 2, 42. And, of course, we come and we uh, remember the death of Jesus, the great sacrifice that God made for us in giving His Son and the great sacrifice that Jesus made in giving His life on the cruel cross. And when we come together, according to Acts 20, verse 7, we remember those things. We come for the purpose of, uh, of partaking of the Lord's Supper, uh, remembering the great and precious gift of Jesus that death on the cruel cross of Calvary. And they did it every, every week. That's why we have that example. Every week we partake of what we call the communion services, the Lord's Supper. And, and of course, we practice the grace of giving. Oh, yes, uh, God has always commanded His children to give. And it, it's for the purpose of God. It's for the purpose of God. Uh, I love, I love in the book of 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter and verse 5, they gave more than they anticipated giving, for they gave first of themselves. And giving starts with yourself. We humble ourselves so that we might go up. And that is important for us. Uh, any additions or subtractions from what God has given to us and how we're to act is wrong. Colossians 3.17 says, Whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving glory or praise to God through Him. So God wants us to give. And God wants us to observe His worship, spirit and truth. And when we come together on the Lord's Day, that's the purpose of us coming, to worship God. It's not to show off our, our good clothes or, or, or to make uh, some kind of a show of anything. It's to worship God. God is our audience when we come together to worship Him. And we need to do it in truth and in spirit. There are three things uh, that we have to abide by. Uh, shall I say three ways that uh, Scripture authorizes acts that we give to Him. Uh, first is direct command. You know, we remember over there in the conversion of Cornelius in the 10th chapter, verse 48, and He commanded them that they were baptized. He commanded them to be baptized. Oh, you can if you want to. It's not necessary. Yes, it is. And it is for the remission of sins, for the forgiveness of sins. I, who could not believe that? Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Col uh, Galatians 3, verse 26 and 27. We're called as ch children of God by the power of faith. We're called children of God for everyone that hath been baptized. Or, or what Ananias told Saul, Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins. 
we're also commanded by example, approved example, if you please. Upon the first day of the week, the disciples came together to break bread. Acts 20, verse 7. Uh, we have the examples of what the apostles did and, and what God wants us, and we can uh, look at that. And we have what is called uh, implication, inferred, if you please. It's like the Lord tells us that we are to do this uh, uh, because this is a result. Uh, read Matthew 3, verse 16. Now, there's also, there's also uh, in our worship, we, we worship God, we give Him the praise and the glory, but we, we have that submission to one another, uh, that building up of one another. What, what is accomplished when I come to, to the Lord's services and I worship God by singing and praying and preaching and Lord's Supper and of giving? Uh, what is accomplished for me? What do I get out of coming to worship my God? God is the one that receives our worship. But I get something from it. What can I get? Uh, let me enumerate a few things that I get because of time. I want you to think about this. First of all, I have a greater knowledge of God's Word. A greater knowledge of God's Word. Yes, I read my Bible every day. I, I read, you, you know, it's not difficult for me to read through my New Testament every month. It's not difficult at all. All you have to do is do about nine chapters a day. That's all you have to do. And when we come together and I listen to the classes and uh, I listen to the teaching and I sing and I pray, I, I get a greater knowledge of God's Word. Uh, what is it the Lord said in 2 Timothy 2, 15? Uh, in King James it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly handling or rightly dividing the word of truth. My American standard says, be diligent. Be diligent. Put your effort in to studying God's word because it's profitable for me. So I get a greater knowledge of God's word. Secondly, uh, it helps me. It prepares me for a, for a happier life. Are you listening to this? For a happier life. You want a happier life? Let me tell you, all you have to do is do what God says. That's all you have to do. Uh, my favorite book in the Bible, as everyone knows, that's been around me for very long, is the Philippian letter. I, I love the book of Philippians. Now, is it more important than any other? Absolutely not. Why do I like it? Because I kind of like reading about the joy that Christians can have in the Lord. I, I like the happiness that it brings. I, I like looking with a positive attitude toward it. You know, how beautiful are, are the things that's written in the book of Philippians. And if you're reading your Bible, listen to this passage. Philippians 4.4, 4, you've heard it so many times. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Sometimes, no, always. Rejoice in the Lord. Now, does that mean I have joy with everything that's going on in our world today? No. But I'm happy with my relationship that I have with Jesus. And I can rejoice in that I know heaven is mine. Oh, 1 John 1, verse 4, we are to relate to God through this joy that God gives to us, fills our life with. Thirdly, I am assured, are you getting the word assured, of an eternal home? Assured of an eternal home. Uh, what do I mean by that? God assured me I'm going to have a an uh, 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 eternal life. You know, death is not the end to it. Uh, death does not end uh, the, the awareness of the soul. Uh, we know what God says about being faithful to Him, and we know about the eternal life. We read about it, and He promised it to me. I, I'm going to read a passage of Scripture. I turn, turn in your Bible to the Roman letter in any chapter. Now, Romans letter, 8th chapter, I'm going to read uh, verses 24 and 25. Listen to this. For we are saved by hope, but not hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, what doth he hope for? Now, listen to verse 25. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. I want to assure you that God said His heaven is ours if we're faithful to Him. We have that eternal life. It's important for us. Uh, Titus, if you will, in the book of Titus, uh, 
writing to the brethren, or writing to the brother, shall I say, I, I want you to notice what he says here in Titus, the first chapter. And the verse, let me get it here, is verse, let's go to verse 2. What do I have in the Lord? In hope. Now, the word hope is not the happenstance, like we say, I hope I get this or I hope I get that. No, 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 no. That's not what it is. Hope is the desire to have, now listen to this part, with the expectation of receiving it. The desire to have something with expecting to get it. It's, it's going to be ours. That's like uh, Christmas season's coming up, as we say it. And you want uh, whatever you might want. Let's say a new car. Now, that's not going to happen to me. But uh, let's say you want a new car. A and you're aware that your spouse or someone has already bought you that new car. and It's going to be there on Christmas morning for you. Well, that's exactly what it's like. God said eternal life is yours. It's here. Heaven's yours. So that's the hope that he's speaking about. In hope of eternal life, which God, listen to this, that God, who cannot lie, promised before the world began. Are you hearing it? God can't lie. So if God said it's there for you, it's there for you. That's what God wants us to know. I also, I also know that I must draw nigh to God. When, when we come together to worship, I feel a closeness to God, a closeness to God. It's important that I am drawn closer to God. Uh, James in the fourth chapter in verse 7 through 10 tells us that we, we need to walk in the steps of Jesus, who is God's only begotten Son, who is a part of the Godhead with God. We need to stay close. And when I come together with my brethren to worship God, it gives me and draws me closer. And my faith is strengthened. We know that the Lord says in Romans 10, verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. My faith is strengthened when I am with my brethren, when I am with God, when I humble myself, when I go down in order that I might be exalted up. I am strengthened in that. My faith in knowing what God is, who God is, what God is. It strengthens me. And I have a deeper insight to the truth. And that's God's Word. God has made these things available for me. But He's made them available for each and every person. Anyone that wants to receive the blessings from God can. And I want you to know one other thing that coming together to worship God with one another does. It strengthens me and it prepares the way, well, let's just say that it takes out the wrinkles in the life that I live. God knew what he was doing and what he meant when Jesus in the 10th chapter of the book of Matthew exemplifies for us an important thing. Uh, when the disciples were sent out to the Jews, the limited commission, as we call it, in Matthew 10, they went out by twos. You know, there's an old saying of strength in numbers, and the strength is not just the strength of the accumulation of the people together, but the strength is in one another. So therefore, we need to humble ourselves before God, submit ourselves to one another, He'll lift us up. Oh, yes. Before we can go up, we have to, in necessity, look at ourselves and go down. Humble yourselves before God, even today. Let Him direct your paths. Let Him lead us to eternal glory. Let's close the lesson with this passage. In John 14, verse 1 through 3. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Hear his precious word. Develop a faith in Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins. Confess his beautiful name. Be immersed, have your sins washed away so that God might raise you up to walk in a new life for the Lord. And we that are members of the body, when we find ourselves struggling, falling, 
Let us lean upon one another and let us go to God so that he might restore us as he desires. Pray with me. Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee, O God, for this time we have together. We thank thee for the wonderful gift of Jesus. We thank thee for the eternal life that has been promised. We ask thee, O God, to be with us and strengthen us so that we might gain that wonderful place. We thank thee for Jesus that makes it all possible for us. And it's through his name that we do pray. And amen.